Hello everyone, my name is Jumbo Pancake, and today I'm going to be doing a full modification guide for the Nerf and Strike Maverick. This is a video is targeted towards beginning modders. If you are new to the hobby, you may not know what the Maverick is. It's a 2005 blaster released under the N-Strike line. It's essentially a strong arm just with worse ranges because it has a primitive plunger system. You push this button on the side which pops out the cylinder and then you can front load six darts that exposes around two barrels at a time. Then you push the cylinder back in, pull back on the priming handle and pull the trigger to fire once. Every time you pull the trigger, it rotates the cylinder automatically for you. If you're a beginning modder, you probably aren't familiar with the internals of different blasters, and you don't want to try to mod a new blaster because if you end up breaking it, then you just wasted a bunch of money. The Maverick is a really great place to start because it's really cheap, they're everywhere at Goodwill and you can get them for like $3, and to modify it, you don't need a lot of external materials. You don't need things like upgraded springs or 3D printed parts. All the materials used are really easy to get your hands on. For this mod, you will need a Maverick, a knife, four to five pennies, some sandpaper, a strong flathead screwdriver, a precision Phillips head screwdriver, some thin craft foam, a pair of scissors, super glue, and a thin saw. I believe this one was used for pumpkin carving. The first step is to remove the three screws on the priming handle. There's one in this little hole, one over there, and one back here. You need to do that because there's another screw hidden behind it. After you've done that, you can pry apart the priming handle. Make sure you leave the bottom half in because it'll make it easier when you're putting it back together later. Now you just need to remove the eight screws on the body. There are four on the front section, three on the handle, and then the one that was hidden behind the priming bar. After that, you can pry the shell open. And voila, the internals of the Maverick. First, you're going to want to take out the cylinder system. So you can pull back on this little part here and lift the cylinder out. There may be a little bit of struggle, but you should be able to get it. There we are. Now we're just going to start work on this. This next part is possibly the hardest, depending on your blaster. We're going to have to pry this top piece off to remove the bar that runs through the center of the cylinder so we can access the internals. Um, when you do this, you want to make sure that the bottom stays flat on the table because there's a spring and a little plastic piece in there that we don't want to lose. So to start, lift up this center piece and put your strong flathead screwdriver underneath and then you're just going to pry up. On this blaster it was pretty easy, but on some it can be really hard to take out. So just pull that out and set it off to the side, and now when you lift this up you can see there's the spring and little plastic piece I was talking about. You can set those off to the side as well. Next you're going to take your precision screwdriver and remove the three screws that are on the bottom of the cylinder. You're going to have to rotate this gray piece around to access them all. We're going to need to do this so that we can access the inside of the cylinder. Once you've done that, you can simply pull off this bottom piece. And here, here are the internals of the cylinder. Each barrel has a dart post and an air restrictor. If you don't know what an air restrictor does, it's basically a automatic sealer for the airway. So when the dart is inserted into the chamber, it pushes the air restrictor down, which opens up the airway so that the air can reach your dart. And then as soon as the dart reaches the barrel, it pops back up, which slows down the plunger head and therefore um, stops it from hitting other parts of the blaster and causing damage. However, in older blasters such as the Maverick, these air restrictors were not well designed, and so it, it actually limited the amount of air reaching the dart by quite a bit, and so therefore decreased performance. So to remove these, it's really simple. All you have to do is pull up on the dart post and you'll get this plastic piece, remove this plastic piece and the spring. And do that for all of these. Don't put the dart posts back in yet because we're going to make another modification to those. 
the other part of the cylinder are these dart posts. So when you put a dart into the cylinder, there's both the walls of the barrel that kind of squeeze down on the dart and make sure that there's a good air seal, and then there's this dart post. So on some blasters, perhaps, the dart post is wider, that it actually pushes out on the foam and forms a good seal, but on the Maverick, it's super loose, and so all it really does is takes up space and prevents you from using other kinds of darts like homemades and half-length darts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the dart pose so I can use any darts. If you want to leave it, you can, but um, I'm going to take them off. To remove the dart post, there are pretty much two ways you can do it. One is you can simply clip off the dart post with um, like some wire snippers or something. But what I like to do is I like to actually saw out the area around the dart post so that it opens up even more of the airflow. So through one of these larger gaps, because there are three circular holes and then three kind of rectangular-ish holes, you put your saw through one of the rectangular ones and you just start sawing back back and forth. Um, you want to stay as close to the dart post when you do this though, so that these outside pieces stay there, which makes sure that the dart won't be vacuum loaded, that is, the dart won't be sucked into the plunger tube when you prime the blaster. So just start sawing back and forth on these. Once you've removed all the dart posts, you just need to clean up these little plastic bits that are left. So using your sandpaper and your knife, just kind of clean them up as best you can. Make sure you have some kind of surface underneath that you don't mind getting cut while you do this because you don't want to scratch up a nice table or something. Once you clean up those plastic pieces nicely, we are functionally done with modifying the cylinder, but there is one more modification we can do. If you remove these three screws on top of the cylinder, you can completely remove this black shroud, which gives it kind of a skeletal look, like this. But I'm going to leave mine on. To put the cylinder back together, you're first going to take these little plastic pieces we've been working on and just snap them back on to the bottom of the cylinder. Then take the upper portion of the cylinder and making sure that the screw holes on the upper portion line up with the screw holes on the bottom portion, snap the bottom portion back on. Then take the spring and put it in the bottom and then take the little plastic piece that we were made sure not to lose earlier and also put it back. Then flip the cylinder over and take this upper plastic piece and push it back down. Now again, for some blasters this may be hard and you'll need a hammer, but for mine it's you just can push it down. Now you just need to replace the screws on the bottom and the cylinder is back together. The next step is to pad the plunger head. Because we removed the air restrictors, every time the blaster fires, there's a possibility that the plunger will slam into the other end, which could damage the blaster. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of thin foam on one end of the plunger so that even if it hits it, the impact is padded and nothing really happens. So you're going to remove this part of the blaster and you're going to open it up. And now we're going to add a piece of foam on the bottom end of this. So the piece of thin foam we had from earlier, what you're going to do is you're going to take this end and you're just going to press it into the foam. And then we're going to cut out the traced pattern with the scissors and glue it in the bottom. So just press it in until you have a nice circle. And then just cut it out. So. Go along the edges of that circle with your scissors and try to be exact as exact as you can, but if you aren't perfect, that's totally fine. Once you've cut out the circle of foam, we need to glue it down into the bottom of this other end. So just quit te 
test fit the foam to make sure it fits and I cut mine a little bit too big so if it's too big simply trim the edges test fit again and it fits now take your super glue unscrew the cap and put a few drops into the bottom. Try to make sure that they don't touch the sides because then um, the plunger might get literally glued onto the other end, um, which wouldn't be good. So just put drip some glue down. And then take the, your piece of foam and push it down. You can use your screwdriver to make sure it reaches the bottom. And then just press it down and wait for it to dry. While the glue is drying, we're going to do the full cylinder drop modification. In stock form, when you drop out the cylinder, it only exposes about two barrels at a time, which is sometimes annoying when you're trying to reload quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it drop out all the way so it exposes around five barrels at a time. To do that, we're going to need to cut off two major parts. One is this little nub right here, and the other, which is on the cylinder, is this right here on the top. When we cut both of those off, it'll allow the barrel to drop out fully. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your saw and you're going to cut off both of those pieces. Try to keep it as flat otherwise, other than the piece you're cutting off, so just shave that off but keep the rest flat and shave the other piece off but keep it at a 90 degree angle. Once you've shaved off the pieces of plastic that need to, we can put everything back together and then do the final modification that will involve the pennies. So, start by taking your cylinder and just putting it back in. You may need to press on this piece of plastic to get it back in, just like we did to get it out. Snaps into place, and you're good. Next, before we put the plunger in, you're going to want to put the top slide back in. Make sure that this little pin um, connects with this little return spring up here. The return spring is what pulls it back after you prime and it's really important to make sure that it lines up. So this little hole right here will go onto the pin. So just take the slide, put it back in, and then using your screwdriver and your fingernail, just get it back on. Now we can put on this orange front muzzle piece and the plunger. So start by putting the actual plastic plunger piece back in. Make sure that the front ledge goes in front of this other ledge right here. I'll show that in a moment. You want to make sure that this little ridge of plastic on the plunger is ahead of this ridge of plastic on the actual blaster, so that way when the plunger is sliding, the front piece stays in place. So that stays in place, so that way we get good air seal every time. Now simply take your spring and put the catch mechanism back on, like that and then put the spring back in. You'll need to put the catch spring back onto the catch mechanism as well and this part can be a little finicky, you kind of have to line everything up so line up that spring and line up that so it should look like this Now comes the modification that has to do with the pennies. What we're going to do is we're going to put the pennies behind the spring and it just so happens that the Maverick spring is the exact same diameter as regular pennies and what this will do is it will compress the spring a little bit more and give it just a little bit more power. So simply push the spring forward and slide the pennies behind. 
and obviously the more pennies you do the more power it'll have um, but if you do too many then the spring will become over compressed and that'll just weaken it so I think five is a pretty good spot but it's really up to you Once you've got the pennies back in, you can put the whole blaster back together. This came out, so I'll need to put that back. Also, when you're putting it back together, make sure that the pin on the slide is in front of this on the plunger. Otherwise, pulling the slide back will do nothing. It has to be there so that it'll actually move the plunger. Now we just need to put the shell back together. The screw holes should line up, so it should be pretty straightforward, and then you're done. So that is how to modify a Nerf Maverick without buying really any external pieces. It definitely shoots harder than before, it won't stand up to newer Elite Blasters, but compared to its stock form, it's definitely upgraded. It does shoot decently harder, it can take pretty much any kind of darts, and the full barrel drop helps a lot with um, reloading. Now I'm just going to go over a few tips to help you use it in its modified form. Probably the hardest part of using the modified Maverick is getting the cylinder back into the blaster after reloading. Before we modified it, the cylinder would only pop out this much, so the rotation mechanism was still on the cylinder. However, now that it pops out all the way, the rotation mechanism gets completely exposed, so it takes some practice getting it back onto the cylinder. The easiest way is to just push it in by hand, and then twist until you hear a click. That means that the rotation mechanism has engaged. But with practice, you can also do it one-handed. You just sort of twist it in and then shake the blaster to ensure that the rotation mechanism gets into the cylinder. The other issue that can occur if you put more than five pennies, sometimes even five is a little risky, is the catch won't engage. Um, you can sometimes fix this by when you prime it to just pull back kind of violently like like that and that will really force the catch mechanism to engage with the spring. That pretty much wraps it up. I hope this tutorial was clear and thorough. If you have any questions or feedback feel free to put them in the comment section down below and thank you for watching.